Hey everybody, today we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to take a break from those tedious little endgame puzzles, and today we're going to go through a couple Checkmate in 2 puzzles. I'm going to show you five puzzles, and they're going to get a little more difficult as we go along. Now even though these are just two move checkmates, I'm sure they're going to teach you some really valuable concepts that are going to help you improve your games. Now let's see if we can solve all of them without any help. Now as I said, we're going to start with something relatively simple. It's White's turn to move, and remember the challenge is to checkmate in two. So moves like rook to b6 or trying to bring your queen to the 8th rank and check over here on h8, that's not going to solve this task. Now I know that years and years of social media have trained all of you to instantly look for a queen or a rook sacrifice in order to solve this puzzle, but that's actually not the case here. This one is pretty straightforward, but I'll teach you an important endgame lesson. The key to solving this puzzle is to notice how few moves Black has. Now looking at the board, if it were Black's turn to play, his only legal move now would be a knight move. Now as we can see, the Black King can't go to the 8th file because our Rook guards it. So if we only find a move that would allow us to give a check next turn, it would be checkmate. This is why the correct move in this position is Queen to f5, pinning the Knight. Now this move forces Black to play Pawn to h5 because it's his only legal move. And after the Pawn moves, Queen takes on h5, and that's checkmate. Pretty easy, right? Okay, now let's explore one more example with the same motif but a more complicated one to spot. Now again, it's White's turn to move and checkmate in two moves. We can see that the Black King is stuck in this corner, but we can't checkmate with the Rook because the Knight guards this Bishop. The Zugzwang here is more subtle because Black has three legal moves. He can move the G-Pawn, move the D-Pawn, or move the Knight, but this would mean that we can checkmate on G8, so Black is definitely not gonna wanna do that. So can you find a move that would both stop the pawns from moving at the same time, forcing black to move the knight? Yep, that's it. The correct move here is bishop to d4. It pins the g pawn while also taking away this d4 square from black, which forces him to move the knight, and then we can checkmate the next move. All right, moving on to the next. It's black's turn to move in this one, and let's see if we can solve it. One quick note here, the main difference between puzzles and real games, knowing this is a puzzle, and especially that it's a checkmate in two puzzle, it gives you a much broader vision of the board. We also don't have the time crunch going on. And you know that you have to look for a tactic. Now in a real game, you might miss tactics like these because you'd be focused on a completely different thing, or you're just worried about the time. Now this is why doing puzzles is really important. It creates patterns for you to recognize in your games, and it makes you think twice before just grabbing the first opportunity you see. Now, why am I saying this? Because if you didn't know that this was a puzzle, I guarantee that a lot of you would play pawn to g5 because it forks the king and the rook. And after that, you'd capture the rook. Am I right? Okay, now there is absolutely nothing wrong with that move. It's still a forced checkmate, but it's a forced checkmate in 17 moves, all right? So I doubt a lot of you would have found all of the right moves. Hell, I definitely don't think I would have been able to do it. So let's get inspired by our last puzzle and see what moves the White King has in this position. Oh, none. So we just have to find another way to check him, right? Well, another good way of thinking in chess is to think in terms of checks, captures, and threats. Now I know you guys must hear this a lot, but it's true. So let's look at what checks we have here. So we already analyzed pawn to g5, which means we definitely know that that's not the move. We have rook to g4, but this doesn't lead anywhere. Actually, it puts us in a losing position. And we've got queen to h5. White is forced to take with the pawn, and black has a nasty mate. Are you able to spot that? Congratulations, pawn to g5 for the mate. And now, let's move on to the fourth puzzle. Now, I'll give you a little bit more time to think about this one. It's black's turn to play. Any ideas? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a little bit longer to think about this one. How is this a mate in two? You can't waste any moves like bishop to h4 or you can't bring in your pawns to help you. All right, let me tell you, this one is an internet favorite and yes, you might need to Google the answer here. I honestly just added this one for a little bit of my personal humor because I don't think you're ever going to encounter a checkmate like this in a real game situation. All right, so we can clearly see that white is completely cut off from the first rank. But how do we checkmate him? I mean, we only have one check available, which is bishop to d6, but white can block this with pawn to f4. And now, 
you guessed it, the al passant comes into play. Pawn takes on f3, and there's your discovery checkmate. Now, for our last example, it's white's turn to move. And I guarantee you're going to have a hard time with this one. I guarantee you're definitely not going to think of this approach if you were in an actual game either. Now, as I said, this is why it's so important to just drill, drill, drill with these puzzles. Now, we can see that white's pawns are just one measly square away from promotion, and your king is not in an immediate threat. So, most naturally, you'd promote your e-pawn to a queen. And even if you're clearly winning here, you're just going to miss one of the most beautiful checkmates that you can deliver. Okay, so before we stick to one particular move, let's explore some possible options. We saw that we have a Zugzwang and a queen sack before, so can any of this apply here as well? We see that the queen sack is not going to work, and the queen can't check on any dark squares because she's simply going to get captured. We can't move the e2 rook because it guards this f2 pawn, so we're instantly going to fail the challenge if we allowed any checks. Uh-oh. I think I might have just spoiled that for you guys. As I said, you can't allow black to have any checks. Now how do we achieve that? Our only checks were queen to g6 and queen to d4, but both times our queen would get captured. Well, we have one more check in this position. Can you see it? It is the brilliant under promotion to a knight. And even if black does capture us, guess what? We'd under promote to a knight once again, delivering a beautiful and honestly unheard of three knight checkmate. All right, that's all we've got today for the two move checkmates. I hope you enjoyed this one and I really hope you found a couple things to look out for in your own end games. You're gonna encounter literally endless scenarios in your end games and as impossible as it sounds, you kinda have to be prepared for any situation that might come up, whether it be an under promotion to a knight or maybe put your opponent in a Zuxvang. Either way, you've gotta take a few moments to step back and think of all the possible threats on the board. I'll see you next time.